Well, hello, folks. How you doing? Joe and Scout in the woods today. Got a pretty cool gift I got from a subscriber I want to use and show you. So that'll be the focus of this video. Stay tuned. I'm walking to the woods. Cut a ton of trees down back in here. These are all live aspen. I wonder why. It is like a garbage nuisance tree. Where are you going? It's this way. This way, big guy. Come on. Silly boy. No joke, look at all this stuff they cut down. These are all aspen or poplar. Look at it all. It's all open now. Completely different. Here's a here's a oak that's down too. I don't think they would have meant to cut the oak down. That doesn't make any sense. I was gonna wait until I got into the woods I had to bust this thing out, but this seems like a good opportunity to use it. Check this thing out. This is a South Korean chopper. Look at that thing. I got it from a subscriber and I've got his name written down. I'll grab it here in a minute. It's South Korean, so I'm not really familiar with the name, but look at that thing. It's got that Cecil rope on it. Holding it together. This sheath did not come with it. It didn't come with this sheath, but I grabbed one to bring out to the woods. Look at that thing. Let's chop, see how she goes. Do some chopping. Chomper. Watch out, Scoots. So this is one of those that dead aspen. Not dead, sorry, one of the live aspen they've cut. So this is very green. It should be very soft and easy to cut through. Go back up, bud. Go on. Can you see up here? Yeah. <laughs> that was an inch and a half thick. Again, green, like I'm saying, and aspen. It's that thick. Right through. Easy peasy. So it's all worked, huh? Alright, let's see if we can work down a little bit farther down on the thicker. Oof! That works pretty slick, guys. This has got to be... Half an inch, quarter of an inch thick. Okay, Scout, you're gonna, you're just gonna take the. Okay, he's gonna knock my. Okay, there he goes. Weirdo. <laughs> okay, back to the chopper. You're back, are ya? Weren't you satisfied with the piece? Okay. So this is thicker. Move, Scout. This is thicker, and it'll get you a closer angle up on it. Watch out, bud. Not too shabby. Oh, let's go. Come on, man. Thing's pretty sturdy, too. Pretty sturdy. All right, so that's a pretty quick test on just green live aspen. That's nothing. Let's get this back into its sheath, and we'll walk over. Head over to the woods proper, find some oak, and hack up on that with this. Oak will be the test. Oak will be the test. Good boy. I'm gonna have to cross on a log here, I think. That uh, ice is not going to hold me. Look at all that. <laughs> yeah, that ice ain't holding me. Go. Up. Up, Scout. Stay. Stay. Good. Stay there. 
I know. Well, we're going to cross right now. Oh, Sketchy, get up, buddy. Get up. Like a glove. Like a glove. <laughs> All right, we're going to go that way, I think. That way. We're in the woods, finally. <laughs> Good boy. All right, before I go any further, I'm going to give a huge shout out to MVMT Movement, the watch and sunglass company. I'm sure you guys have seen them all online. They have a very good online presence. They do a lot of advertising on Instagram and YouTube and stuff like that. About a month ago, I, I received a few packages from them. They were kind enough to send me some watches, like three or four watches and three or four pairs of glasses, sunglasses. So I'm uh, pretty in impressed with them already and I wore this, this watch on my dollar store survival challenge overnighter held up fine obviously the cold and all that, to the cold and all that stuff still wearing it it's going strong a little bit of info about movement watches they start at just 98 bucks the equivalents can run about four to five hundred dollars I personally really like the simple design the nice leather band on this one and just a black face nothing really much else on there for this one very classy and I can wear it in the woods too I like the leather thick genuine leather so Movement's offering you guys $15 off today with free shipping, free returns. Go to MVMT.com and use the promo code JoeRobinette15. And now it's time to step up your watch game today. Go to MVMT.com, use JoeRobinette15 and get $15 off, free shipping, free returns. Join the movement. Well, we got something in here for Scoot Magoots. You smell it through the can, can you? What a good sniffer you got. Look at the good sniffer. <laughs> Gonna make a little brace here for him. Go on this side so that he can push. He can try to eat his food without pushing the container all over. I'll show you what I got him. This is called Blue Wilderness. 100% grain free. Oh, you're just moving the stick, are you? So, this is a decent food. I don't like to really feed him too much canned food, but in this case, it's really, really good food. So the first few ingredients are beef, chicken, chicken broth, chicken liver, potatoes. So the first five are legit, and then you're on to like carrageen, flax seed, and then into other random stuff that I really don't know what they are. And whenever you're reading ingredients, it's always nice to know what they are. But the first five are legit. Let's open this bad boy for Mr. Scoots. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Doesn't that look yummy? He doesn't know what to do, he's over here digging. What do I do? Hold on buddy, back up, back up, back up. So sometimes I have to give him this stuff called Metcam. Let's go back up. And that's a medicine for his bones and joints and stuff like that. But it's liquid and he doesn't like the taste of it. I've tried to put it in peanut butter and stuff for him. What I can do, it never really works, but what I can do is this. Get him this wet dog food, and put it in there and he, he eats it up. I don't have any with me, but that's okay. He can miss today. But yeah, he's, uh, he's well worth it. You know, this is like four bucks a can almost but that's okay, it's a treat for him once a, once a week, maybe twice a week I get it for him. He's a good boy. Back to the chopper. So, a little bit of info on this chopper. Again, it's from South Korea. I'm trying to get you a better picture. I don't know if you got to see it pretty good earlier. So, you can see how thick it is. I'm saying that's about a half inch thick, maybe quarter inch, but she's thick, guys. And it hooks down, it has this big like drop. That Cecil rope, a hole in the in the pommel there so you can hook the rope through. I asked the gentleman, oh let me grab the thing with his name on it. The gentleman's is from South Korea and his name is uh, Kim Dong Hoon. Or Dong Kim Un. So I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, no no disrespect meant at all. Just me being white. <laughs> <laughs> so, this was from a another little like machete style thing I got from um, a guy in Quebec. 
but this fits on there in there pretty good. I slide it right down into the handle and I can hook that on my belt and then tie this part on my leg. So I think that's what I'm gonna do so I can walk around freaking Rambo style. <laughs> so there you can see it. It's on my hip. It's pretty long, it goes down to my knee exactly. And tie this little shoestring part around my knee to have it sit the uh, more snug. Quick draw McGraw, I went to art school. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do for today, just hang out for the day here with Scout, play with this knife, this chopper quite a bit. I do have an extra little thingy that I haven't had before that I wanted to try out. I got sent these things called Jiva cubes and they're supposed to be like an instant coffee. So I have been drinking the coffee lately, guys. I've been mixing it with the uh, the old French vanilla and the hot chocolate. It's uh, taking me a little little bit to get used to it, but I am starting to like it. So this is what these things look like. Hopefully that's in the, in the focus. You can make them in hot or cold. And uh, this one is actually a French vanilla style too, so that's what we're gonna do. You all done? Was that good food? Or did you just smell my coffee? Do you smell my coffee cubes? <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, maybe I'll get a fire going after I play around with this knife. Sit here, make up a brew, and uh, yeah, have some fun with my doggy. It's almost Christmas. It'll be Christmas in a few days. Hope you all have your uh, <laughs> your stuff ready for the families. I think I do. The wife's in charge of all that, so I'm pretty lucky. Okay, let's get going. Let's go do some choppings. Go. Don't lick the can, homie. You're gonna cut your tongue. Is that good? Is that good? Here, you got a little, little morsels in there still. A little couple of morsels in there. I'll help you out with. My good boy. Okay, that's it. All right, let's. Where's the lid? Where'd you put the lid? Inside the can. I brought a chair. I brought a chair today. Nice and handy. Okay, leave it, bud. It's done. It's done. Stop. Crazy. I'm on the hunt for some decent oak that I can use to chop. Uh, my knife to chop with, but until then I've come across this pretty seasoned cottonwood So let's go try that out for a little bit until we actually find some decent oak Yeah, I'm gonna have to be careful my dog because he's a little, a little wound up You can see how sharp that is, eh? I asked um, the gentleman Dong or Kim who, who sent this to me what it was intended purpose was for And there was a language barrier, but he definitely said it wasn't meant for bushcraft so <laughs> Back up. That's not too bad. Back up, buddy. See how far I can sink it in. That's pretty good, man. For a knife or for a not an axe, you know? I touched it up a little bit on my just on my strop before I came. But like look at that. That's not bad, man. Make some shavings. <laughs> okay, let's go find some oak. Try to take off a chunk. Bit scout back, buddy. Let's go back. Woo! Burning up. Okay. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. I am going to keep using my gloves just because the uh, the Cecil or the rope on the hand it's rough. So gloves help. I might even actually, if, if this is worth it, I might replace that with paracord. If I plan on using it more often, but it is more of just a novelty thing for me. Okay, not quite oak, but this is ash. This is a dead ash, dead standing. And it looks, yeah, damn. It is definitely seasoned. Very seasoned ash. So I can use this for my fire. We still will look for some oak, but in the meantime, let's let's um, upgrade. You know what I mean? We'll go from live aspen to dead aspen to ash to oak. Hopefully. Let's go back up. Back. Good boy.
Let's go. You are crazy, Scout. It's my own fault. He's obsessed with sticks. My next dog, I'm not gonna throw sticks for, seriously. Maybe I'll have toys at home I'll throw for him. When we come to the woods, it's not stick throwing playing time because it's too much. It's too much, let alone the, the crying, which I can deal with. It's the running underneath the falling trees and the being all willy-nilly with the sticks. He's gonna poke himself in the eyeball. He's literally delimbing this this tree for me. Look at that, he's made it all into nubs down at the bottom. Just straight mark that stick, bro. It's yours. Show him who's boss. I think I have found a piece of oak. It's really difficult because the oak in this wood, in these woods, are either live or deteriorated in standing or fallen and deteriorated. And I don't want to do a chop test on a deteriorated piece of oak because that's just silly. I've people see, seen people do that in the past and not even make attention to it like it's deteriorated or anything and just <laughs> let people think that it's a solid piece of wood. But people are smarter than you think. People pick up on things like that, you know? Anyways, what's a chop test if it's deteriorated? So here's a piece of oak that looks deteriorated. <laughs> Let's check it out. I chopped into it a little bit already just to make sure. And in all reality, in all honesty and truth, it is a touch deteriorated. On the inside, it's solid though. Like, pretty, pretty solid. So take it for what you will. We're gonna chop this bad boy down. It might even fall over, but we'll end up using, we'll chop it up into pieces to use it for firewood. I know, buddy. Here, take this so you're not freaking out while I am chopping. Cool. Yeah, he, he caught on to it. Okay, yeah, it's, she's solid inside, guys, for sure. I'm gonna take off the outside here. Let's go, please stop crying. Just take it off the outside so you can see the quality of the inside. Try and use his two hands. No, there's no way. No, it doesn't make sense to. So Korea, South Korea. I don't know what kind of wood they have there, what kind of stuff they have there, but it seems to me like they wouldn't really be having too many hardwoods. Again, I could be completely wrong, but this oak is very dense, and it's it's doing well. You know, what I mean, it's chopping her. It's not as efficient or convenient as an axe, but that's not what it is, right? Right. Yeah, I can't listen to him cry anymore. So this is coming down. Probably right from the bottom too. Not even where I chopped. Perfect. He's a little extra wound up just because he hasn't been out in so long, which is only like a week. You got that? Sure, there's a little hollow stump. Boop. A little cottonwood stump. That's probably enough wood. Let's get a spot cleared for a fire. Here's my two pieces. I'm not going to need this much wood at all for, to boil up a coffee or some water for a coffee. But again, this is just for practicing and playing around. Move. So let's see if I can delimb these these dead ash branches with one uh, swipe. Swipe. Move. Oh yeah. Go, Scout. Oh. Oh, well, that's not so bad. Leave it. That's mine. Leave it. 
Back up. Man, this is difficult with you. It tends to bind this blade, I, I'm noticing, when I'm, when I'm hitting it into wood, it's binding pretty good. Move, Scout. Okay, seriously, you gotta go. You're gonna get hurt. So take this. Go get that. Dog management. Yeah, it's still binding pretty good. Back, Scout. Scout, back. Okay. That's mine, buddy. He's all about it. All about them sticks. What? Dude. <sighs> Struggle is real. <laughs> this one's really the only one with uh, any substantial diameter on it. I'm just going to take these little things off the sides. That works pretty good, eh? Okay. Do it this way first. I like it because this thing has a, a canted downward, like I'm saying, like a half moon shape or whatever, so it goes in easily to the wood, even though it doesn't really have a point on it. Like a tip. So we're gonna save these pieces we're able to split off. That's kind of hard to aim it. I'm not worried about prying on this thing or anything, really. Let's go, go. This is unconventional, you know what I mean? It's not a knife, or it's not a, an axe and a saw I'm using to split this wood down. It's just this crazy Korean chopper. All right, let's try and baton this one. Got This is the same one I was working on. Got all those pieces off of it, so got kind of a flat bottom now. <laughs> I need a better baton. Okay, that worked. Still haven't batoned it. That's perfect. And those are good fuel pieces. I can really even try to split this one down one more time. I don't need to, but because of the demonstrative and playing around purposes. So instead of trying to swing it down like this at it, I'm gonna bring it up with the with the uh, the chopper like I would with an ax. There we go. Okay, we're getting there. I gotta take some off of that big oak now. This is that dead standing piece of oak that we grabbed. I'm going to take it and I'm going to chop it, maybe like a foot long section out of it, bust down some kindling out of it and some fuel, and probably only use that much out of it. It's not necessary. I got all these twigs and everything around. And again, I was just playing around testing that chopper out. Okay, let's do some proper batoning now. I was able to get these two pieces like you saw. Solid pieces of oak. Let's try and batten this one. I want to make this, uh, this point a little more flat. so. Tony would be easier. Man. I like this chopper, guys. I really do. Definitely not going to take the place of probably any of my tools, but it's just really cool as like a something to play around with. Oh. There you go. You can see an inside is solid oak. Okay. Split this one down too so I could use it for firewood. 
but I am going to split it a different way again. So it's already split through, so she doesn't want to actually split off or split the whole way. I don't know if I showed this in a video. I think I did recently. If, you, if you're batoning wood and you've batoned all your pieces, you don't have something heavy enough, just grab a couple pieces together. It's the same thing. There we go. Okay, so we're looking good on the firewood front. I'm gonna go grab some twigs, but this is enough fuel, especially with this stuff. We'll sit here and have, have a fire for an hour or so. Trying to make some shavings. See how this bad boy works for the shavings. Get that in there. Not too bad, but I need something to catch them because they're not staying on at all. Okay, so got my little grill um, case bag, I guess. I'm gonna try and land the, sh the shavings on there. It'd be the best case scenario for me. It's got this like finger groove, this little choil deal here. I'm trying to get as close as I can to the blade itself. They're not great, but they'll work. I guarantee they'll work. Even if they don't, there's some natural materi materials around here, some tinders like milkweed and grass and stuff that I can use to help it I'll be I'd bet money that these shavings would go up though with a fire steel all right this might take a bit there's some some knives like trackers like the heck is it uh Tom Brown trackers they have this little like part in them where you can do these curlies this way and they work a little bit on this it works a little bit on this it doesn't have this like cord that's what it's called the cord around down here you kind of just pull make these awesome rufflies rufflies <laughs> as my wife calls them but this isn't that all right check this out i got a cottonwood piece much better curls off this thing oh of course not now look at that some curls actually some curls proper there we go Tell me those aren't decent. Decent. But bam, those are gonna be the ones I strike with the fire steel. For sure. Okay. Old fast curl action. Sent them flying everywhere. Okay, this is not bad. This is going faster. Cottonwood for the win. Look at that. But bam, son. Here's the thing. The back of the chopper is not sharp enough to strike the fire steel at all. It's very rounded. Okay? So therefore, we're going to have to use the blade, which whatever, I'm fine with because it's such a cheap blade and uh, you know, I don't mind if it goes in the dirt. It's just not that kind of blade for me. Um, what we're going to do is set this up how we need it because it is a little bit um, finicky now that we have to use a blade. So the way I'm going to do it, I have two of the solid pieces of oak underneath for a base. That'll be a good start for the fire. And I've got this another piece of oak I'm going to put for a brace. So we've got a base, we've got a brace. I want to make it so that I can rest my fire steel here, pull it like that and then have the, the fire going. So, or then, then, then have the, the shavings catch. So I wanna pick out the thinnest, most airy curls I made and put them all together. I did pick also some reeds, but they're gonna be my first stage. They're not gonna be what I strike my fire steel on because I wanna see that I can do this with, with um, 
with shavings. So I guess my brace is gonna sit here. I didn't really think about that too much. My brace is gonna sit there. I'm gonna pull like this onto that. Again, that's too high. Okay, just work, thinking as we're working here. Thinking as we're working. We're gonna go like this instead. This is gonna be the base now. The brace will come in after. I'm gonna put that there and be able to strike off of, off of the blade. Okay, are we ready? I do wanna do it on the bottom half of the blade, that way it's not right in the middle. And I'm trying to avoid all the ridges on here. Let's do a couple practice runs. That's how it's gonna have to be, right like that. Okay. Take three. All of my good shavings are gone now, too. All right, this will work, I promise. grabbing the top like this, holding it all together, but I'm being very careful of that sharp blade on my palm. Okay, well, I promised. Hmm. Okay, maybe we'll have to get grass. Maybe we'll have to do it with grass. Believe it or not, the blade's not that chipped up. It'll take like two seconds to fix that with my, my stone. Okay, off to get some grass, I guess. Run out to the field, grab some grasses. Let's try this now. set it up a little bit differently, I guess. Considering I didn't have very much success the last time. All right. I think it has to be down in there a bit more too. Okay, here we go. At least if I get a bunch of shavings of fire steel in here, I think I can blow it into flame. Like the last one, I almost blew into flames, which is very strange. Damn, this thing is all chewed up, man. Ugh. Let's try it that way. I can't believe this isn't catching. What the heck is going on? This is freaking dry grass. We need a new fire steel. This is crazy. I don't get it. I don't get this at all. At all. There we go. Holy crap. That was a little ridiculous. I got her. Finally. My brace up there. Best lead plans. All right. We're gooten 
Tug now. That was craziness, guys. Like I've, I've struck a stricken sh stroke, struck. I've struck a fire steel before. You know, I have. I swear. Okay, let's check out the damage and see what we can do to fix it. Putty. So let's check out the damage on the fire still and the chopper, for lack of a better word. So the fire steel was already gouged up some, but this really, really finished her off. So I'm going to need a new fire steel. You can see the hourglass figure on that one starting to happen anyway. Need a new fire steel soon, but that's alright. Probably get myself a uh, firesteel.com Armageddon. Look at that thing. Anyways, so no big deal. Again, if you needed to do this, like if you were in a survival situation, if you needed to do that, who cares? You know what I mean? It's still there. It still works. You can still use it. If you're using, if you don't have your knife, if you lose your knife or whatever, break your knife, and you're using, I guess you could still use it if you broke it. But if you're using a rock or something for your fire steel, if you guys have ever practiced anything like that, this happens big time. A rocks, rocks work. Some shells off the beach work. It has to be hard, very, very hard. So, anyways, this is a firesteel.com one that Kyle, buddy Kyle, made me years ago. This is an actually, this is actually an old Gransfors Brooks axe handle, uh, handle on that. Which is pretty cool but very old and now she's needs to be replaced so I got my uh, my DC4 my full Niven DC4 here with a strop let's check out the blade so you can see exactly where I was using it where all the brown is from the from the fire steel from the smoke coming off of it and then again there So it did, it did impact it. It didn't take some little chips off of it. You can see it. Let's clean this off. I'll wipe it on my pants a bit. Let's see it a little bit better, I think, this way. So you can see it right in there. Okay, so that's not so bad though. I believe this is just really like an old like spring spring blade, lawnmower, lawnmower blade, something along those lines, and uh, just turned into that that chopper. So the full living DC4, you have a metal side like a diamond side, and then you have a ceramic side. I'm gonna start with the diamond. This has been used a hundred times too, so the diamond side is a bit. Um, or at war down, so it 100% needs the diamond side. I'm just gonna go in circles. Oh yeah, you can really see it now. Took some chunks out of there. Go in circles, and you know what? I'm gonna do the whole blade, so it's all even. Give it a little sharpening anyway. You just want to keep your fingers off of the edge, obviously, away from the edge. I go by sound when I'm doing this. So you can different sounds for different angles. Just try to keep it right around there. You can spend extra time on the on the grooves if you want. I'm really not too concerned about them being there. I'm just trying to make it sharp again. But if you were to worry about it, spend some time here. Just taking it right down. Oh, 
she's stupid sharp. Very, very sharp. So then I would take my ceramic side and really just do the same thing. Try not to cut your $200 pants. And all this is doing is putting a finer edge on it, shaving down the burr a bit, polishing it up. I don't go for a certain amount of strokes on each side or a certain amount of time or anything like that. I just go until it feels good a couple times back and forth really. Okay. I'll throw it on a strop in a minute. Yeah, she's sharp. She's very sharp. There's still okay, I'll show you. The strop's not gonna take this out anyway. The, the, the majority of the damage right down there there you go you can see it completely just a couple little nicks and I really went to town on that fire steel with this thing so yeah no worse for wear I'm sure trusty heavy cover canteen nice amount of water in there Probably wipe off that mud before I put the lid back on. In my uh, my grill case, I carry a few things now. I've switched it up a little bit. I carry the old grill. I carry my titanium spork and a spatula. And I thought my lid for my heavy cover canteen, but I guess I have that in my backpack. Indeed, indeed I do. Oh, I got a little scout here in my cup too. Okay, so I'm going to set this in the fire, put that boil up, love that canteen, love that titanium man, super lightweight, throw it in the, in the fire, throw it down a hill, she bomb proof. almost there. Doesn't even really need to boil. It's not dirty water or anything, but we'll let her boil. All right, let's check these bad boys out, these Jiva cubes. I got a bunch of different flavors. I got like black coffee, toffee, a bunch of different ones, but like I was saying, uh, French vanilla is my favorite. So the instructions say, uh, open one individually wrapped Jiva cube using one cube per every eight ounces of water or based on your preferred strength. For hot beverage, I guess not water, ounces of fluid, because you can use milk too. For hot beverage, heat milk or water until the desired temperature. Insert cubes after 45 seconds. Stir your coffee is now complete. Enjoy. Insert cubes and after 45 seconds, stir your coffee is now complete. To enjoy cold, just dissolve in two ounces of hot water and top with cold water or milk. Well, I'm not going to do that. It's, it's cold outside. So I imagine it's the desired temperature now. Check this thing out. It smells like coffee. Look at this. So I guess for me or for us, the preferred usage of this would be like a backpacking or lightweight kind of thing where you don't have to worry about bulk or size. I guess bulk or weight really. Bulk and size are the same thing. All right, let's put this in. Jiva. Jiva? Jiva? Maybe I'm saying it wrong. Jiva cubes? J I V A. Oh, yeah, she's boiling. Holy. <laughs> it's darkening up already. That is pretty, pretty cool. Wow. Okay, I guess I can take this off. Probably put my gloves on. Gonna put my gloves on. Fool me once, burn me once, shame on me. <laughs> burn me twice. Get burned, don't get burned again. Still loving this coat too, this triple fat coat, triple fat goose coat I got. Upgrade.
upgrading. All right. She dark. She dark. Oh, it smells super good. That's good. Happy that my coffee smells good. Smells like a French vanilla. And obviously you can add stuff to it if you can use half milk or whatever already. Smells decent. I'm gonna wait a second because she's piping hot. All right. I was watching a scrambled O video the other day. <laughs> the plane comes overhead. I'm like, oh, freaking well, Marty's getting it too. And he's like, oh, Joe's plane's over here. I had to laugh. Thanks for the shout out, buddy. Martin's a good, good guy. He's a, he's a real. Real friend, you know, a friend in real life, an RL. I like him a lot. I actually wouldn't mind getting together with him. Martin, you want to go camping? Can I come to your house? Can I come to your, can I come to your lean-to? I'll drive there. Let me know. Let me know, buddy. Would you guys like to see that? I'm gonna get together with Sean. Ooh, I can't even drink that yet. We get together with Sean soon too. We have an epic trip planned. That'll be really cool. I haven't seen that guy in in a little bit since I shot that uh, the video about his cabin which is looking amazing right now then all the snow and everything up there there's no snow right here we got dumped on late maybe like I don't know a week and a half ago and everything melted because I live in Windsor land of the not winter not real winter the soupy winter Taste is there. The taste is there, boy. That's too hot to really tell. <laughs> but yeah, so I got uh, I got that plan with Sean already for late January, early Feb. Um, I want to do that thing with Martin. So hit me up on, with that uh, about that, Martin. I got a solo. Th well, with Scout, I'm going to take my new uh, snow trucker tent that I got, the canvas tent. And I'm going to go for a few days with that thing, uh, with Scout and that thing. And then I'm also going to go back to that shelter that Mike and I were working on. Maybe I'll bring Mike to that shelter with, with me again next time. You guys seem to like Mike, which is cool. Mike's a solid dude. 100% chill, that guy. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's decent. And there's like, I think there was three cubes in this little box. Oh, four. There's three left. So, if you're looking for them, I don't know if I'm pronouncing them correctly, but it's J-I-V-A. They're made in, uh, in the States. Oh, that's sweet. Made in the States in Miami, Florida. Manufactured by Norax Noonan in Georgia. And I think they're out of Miami, Florida. So that's really cool. Thanks to the guys at uh, Jiva, Jiva, Jiva for sending me those too. Appreciate it. I'll be using them in probably the next few videos actually because cold weather is perfect. All right. Well, I don't know what else to say. I don't think we're going to do much else, Scout and I. We're just kind of. Chillaxin. When's the last time you heard somebody say chillaxin? It's chillaxin, bro. Keeping it real by the fire. Hmm. I like it. I likes it. 
Christmas is coming up. Christmas is in a few days. This is the... Doesn't doesn't tell me on there. What is this? Oh, it held up to the batoning. Of course it did. I'm not surprised, but... Second hand is going normally. Yeah, everything's good. Why don't we all do something cool for the holidays? Why don't we all try to just be a little bit nicer to everyone? Myself included, being nicer to everyone. Try maybe go out of your way a little bit to help your neighbors or if you can get a homeless or people in need maybe a needy family a Christmas dinner we try to do things like that when we can I think it's important I think it's important for some of the world to be kind and our genre might as well be it right we might as well be the, the kind people We really got no reason to hate, you know, I mean, all we want to do is camp. We just want to go out, out to the woods and and hang out. So there's no no real controversy with... Con controversy! No real controversy with that. At least there shouldn't be. Right? Right? Just want to camp. Just want to go camping, bro. <sighs> Coffee time with Joe and Scout. <laughs> the old train the old train came in so you know what really sucks is that I just got this camera not too long ago it's the Canon 80D 80D and I'm noticing that you can hear focusing sometimes I'm not sure if that's just the lens though but my Nikon I had for, and so that's with the, the mic in, the external mic inside. Oh, I bought a new mic. <laughs> Thank you to the person, I can't remember your name off, off the top of my head, but somebody donated 100 bucks to it as well, which was very cool, so thank you. I emailed them to thank you, but thank you again. Um, so the mic's back, everything's well. But I don't know if it's just because of the lens. Like I was saying, my Nikon I used to have, it would do it, but as soon as I plugged an external mic in, it would stop. And it was the kit lens the whole time. It was the 18 to 140 lens, and I had that for years. And I, I still have that. I use that as my B-roll camera now. But this one I just got. I know it's not a new camera. It's an older camera. But even with the external mic in, I can hear it, auto, I can hear it focusing. So I'm hoping it's just the lens. But even still, lenses are expensive, right? Lenses are more expensive than the body a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. all right well i don't know how much more i can ramble on i think that's about it thanks guys for watching this video hope you like it hope it was something different playing around with that chopper that's not something normal for me but uh have a very merry christmas treat each other well i hope nothing but the best for everyone thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one goodbye